A superfluous relay heads off for the moon. A new orbiter has teething problems. And I discover that water reclaimers don't have infinite capacity. All of this and more coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Making Space Home. This is season three of my Let's Play series. And for those people that are new, let's do a very quick recap of what the story is so far. So in season one, my goal was to establish a permanent Kerbal presence in space, which is actually what you see right here. This is Kerbin Station. And this was further challenged by the number of mods that I have. The full list of mods is down there in the description, but what impacted me right off the bat was Unkerbal Start, which forced me to use uncrewed launches at the beginning, including very small sounding rockets, but also put an extra challenge into the game was Kerbalism, which added so many things that I can't even list them all here, so I'm not even going to try. But in the end of Season 1, we established our permanent Kerbal presence with the founding of Kerbin Station, and this station has been crewed ever since. Season 2, we went interplanetary with probes going to Duna, Eve, and Moho, concluding with a probe soft landing on Eve. And the goal of Season 3 is to make my Kerbals as independent from curb and surface as I possibly can. So that's going to mean more stations and bases, resource harvesting, greenhouses, and reusable spacecraft. So lots of things coming up. I've also in the interim upgraded to 1.10, the most recent version of KSP, dragging all of the mods along with me. In fact, this is actually what's going on here. You see, when I re-rendered the station to make sure everything was okay, uh, a solar panel mysteriously broke. So Bill's sort of looking at this, seeing if he can repair it. Um, doesn't look like he can. <laughs> so this is going to be something I need to keep an eye on because Kerbalism definitely makes you use a lot more electricity and your life support systems are very much dependent on your electricity working. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. We'll make sure nothing too untoward comes from that. And while I was concentrating at the end of last season on Eve and Moho and Duna, I put very little attention to what was going on around Kerbin. And so I had to build a lot of vehicles. So here's the Kerbal Construction Time building list right now. Lots of things coming up. I had to build them all from scratch because I was just completely ignoring this end of the game. But why don't we get to our very first launch here? So this is a very simple thing. This is a relay on its way to the moon. And I got a new contract that I will describe to you very shortly. I, I did end up updating some of the contract packs. Uh, some of them were getting quite old and weren't being really updated very much. So gone are things like giving aircraft purpose and the SETI contracts. Now, some of those were still active, so they ended up becoming uh, failed contracts. <laughs> And which did cost me a bit of a reputation and money hit, but I decided I'm just going to eat that. We'll pretend that the Kerbal Space Center's got a few economic hiccups <laughs> that they have to deal with. So we just got to put a single relay in orbit about the moon. There is a restriction as far as the uh, combined antenna strength, but that's not too hard to meet. Um, I you'll see them in just a little bit it's pretty much what I would always put in a relay system around the moon but with this Apple Watch see the restriction on the Apple Watch is just it needs to be below 1100 um, yeah 1100 kilometers and so that gives me an idea for putting this although it's not necessary this is something actually would make a great first relay so I thought as a demonstration purpose and besides it's gonna make me some money um, and earn, wow, quite a bit of reputation. Okay, here we go. Here comes our satellite here. We zoom in on this. I like the way these dishes go in opposite directions. That's something you can configure in the VAB. I think that's, I, I really like that. I think that's pretty neat. That comes with the restock mod that you're able to do that kind of thing. But basically, it's a very, very simple probe. And just make sure that it inserts itself okay. Beautiful. Well done. Well done. The other thing it features is these little beautiful little tanks that have almost taken out all the fuel. They're the smallest liquid fuel tanks 
only hold 2.03 units of liquid fuel. I got that with a little ant engine down here on the bottom. Um, and that's what just, that's just for fine maneuvering of this satellite, which it might not even need because it does have this entire whole pusher assembly here. The ant engine just chucking away. The plumes coming from restock as well with like that they add a little bit on the uh oh god what's that thing called the uh, pre-burner pre-burner exhaust is added in there as well if you look at the pre-burner exhaust it's actually dirtier too i love that i love that that's great all right let's get out to the moon here we're gonna circularize this at 20 kilometers and to be honest, this insertion of 20 by 20, which you might be rightfully saying is going to be a pretty crappy relay orbit, you're 100% right, I'm going to move it around, but this insertion will satisfy the conditions of this contract, so that will satisfy the contract, but then I'm going to put it in a bit of a different orbit, and I'm really rethinking about this, that if I was going to put in a first relay, I think... The orbit I'm about to go for is going to be a better first relay than what uh, I traditionally would do. But either way, this thing is doing it. There we go. Contract complete. Uh, so that's great. We can close that contract. We do not need to worry about you anymore. Yeah, it's close enough. Okay. Get rid of you. And in here... This is what I mean, like, right, I do have relays here. Let's show you the relays I got. So these are my relays. Uh, I'll put in the communication line so you can see, like, a little goofy. There we go, <laughs> our communication lines. <laughs> what is this thing down here that it's communicating with? Some satellite down there. Oh, probably a mapping satellite. Okay. But, you know, that's traditionally the relay setup I put in is, like, go for this uh, you know, what is this? 370 something something. So this is a an orbit with a period of three hours. I place them at nice intervals to make this equilateral triangle. I will point out that it has been a couple of game years since I put these relays up here. Like we are now in year two, day 425, almost the end, almost into the next year, into year three. Um... And I've not touched these since I've inserted them. And look, they're still in a really nice triangle. You don't, like, it's, yeah, if you pay a little bit of attention, you don't have to keep mucking with this. I've had people tell me, oh, you're going to be playing with these satellites, like, all the time to keep their periods right. No, it's fine. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to my uh, idea for a better first relay. Well, it's not my idea, to be quite frank. I think it would be a common thing to do is... We go to the near side of Kerbin, so that would be right here, and oh, this isn't going to last this way, I just realized that as it, yeah, it's not going to be great. Okay, so we'll, we'll add a maneuver here anyway. And then what you do is you push the Apoapsis out to about a thousand kilometers. And what you've created is an orbit, that's pretty good, where, um, you know, it's going to be moving very quickly around periapsis, but it's going to be moving very slowly around apoapsis. So if you're going to have just one relay, this is the kind of orbit that you get. It'll be hanging out here on this side of the planet, or the moon, for quite long periods of time, in which time it can offer... Um, coverage my original thought was well if you put the apoapsis on the far side of the moon um then then that way you get nice coverage of the far side of the moon which is where you're going to want it the problem is this orbit won't stay this way <laughs> i mean the orbit stays this way but as the moon circulates so for instance as the moon moves around to this side of the planet the apoapsis will be on the near side so this whole thing of me thinking like this would be the great orbit would be is well it is for now but it won't be for the future so i don't know if i'm i don't know <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing beautiful beautiful there we go so that's basically the um the whole thing there so now it's in this this orbit here where it can perform it'll do a nice job 
know, as we go out to Apple Apsis here, let's see if we can put another link on there. It's not really providing a relay to anything because of the relays that are already there. But the idea is there. But as it goes out towards Apple Apsis, of course, it's slowing down significantly. You know, so that it will provide good coverage of this side of the moon. You can see it's already starting to shift off. What was I thinking? Anyway, let's get rid of our... So there's the actual little probe, only 44 meters per second of delta V. Uh, that's all it needs. And again, adorable little tanks. This is something I used to do just to keep weight down. I'm putting in just a tiny bit of monoprompt with one of those linear thrust uh, ports. Um, but to be honest, this little setup is actually lighter than using the tiny monoprop can and a little linear thrust port. So this is like a nice little setup for just a maneuvering thruster for uh, a, a satellite when you don't need too much. But anyway, we can take this fella, put you on retrograde, it has enough fuel left to deorbit itself. And that is that, it will say goodbye. So yeah, let, let's get back to the Space Center where there was 788 science waiting for me, mostly coming in from my various EVE pros. Oh my golly, we gotta see what we can spend this on. That's 300. I can't get into this tier yet because I don't have... I should probably start thinking about... What am I at? 3.2 million curb bucks? Can I think about starting to... I think I can do this. Yeah, I'm going to start the upgrading of the research and development too. So that would be, yeah, 2.5 million. That should lead me... Yep. That's going to take a while, I assume. I assume. I look at tech, 16 days, that's okay. All right, but that will be good. That's tier three on that, and that will unlock these. Well, not unlock them, but it'll give me access to these higher tier nodes. Let's see, what else? What else, what else, what else, what else do we got here? Nuclear power, that's something I was looking at. This is a fission reactor. I would love to start to get into that. I am starting to get nuclear engines. Those are on my plate, so that's a 300 one. But all of this is gonna take time to research, and in the meantime, well, we got still more vessels to launch. Okay. This is one of the ones I've been waiting for. So this is the Puff Mark One, um, and you can see here I got, I don't know why one of my tourists here is grayed out, but uh, I got a couple of tourists, actually three tourists, not four people actually, there are a total of six people aboard here. There's another tourist, Dunrick, and Orlin is aboard as our scientist. And got Jebediah in the pilot seat along with Mabby, who is a mad level four engineer because of 25 units of special experience that she's earned through those Kerbal Academy contracts. So you can see that this is actually um, a crude, uh, low Kerbin orbit uh, vessel and we're on our way to Kerbin Station. We do have a contract here to rotate the crew of Kerbin Station. All I gotta do is get these three, well, plus the tourists up there and then uh, recover Colonel Valley, Bill, and Hades who are up there right now. So that's an easy one to do, but the one I'm more excited about is this Hold a Space Camp. Holding a Space Camp requires me to get 16 tourists up to the station, so it's going to take a few loads of these. And also, the station can hold all those people. I do have to up the food and the oxygen supplies up there, which I do have a mission coming up to deal with that, and then some. Um, it's going to take a few of these launches to get up there, so I do need to increase the number of berths that are available on the station that is also coming up in a future mission um, and I'm hoping I don't have to get all of these people up all at the same time but the idea is that we have some experienced Kerbals and they're going to hold a space camp I think they have to be up there for 40 days something like that they have to be up there for 40 days and uh, then you gotta recover everybody and some of these people will become members of the Kerbinaut core and I find that very very exciting. Uh oh, we have an engine failure here. Shoot. What happened? 
Engine malfunction on the Puff 1. Oh, nuts! Well, this is not an auspicious start to this. Okay, we're going to have to deal with a high altitude abort. Okay, okay, okay. Well, okay, we can forget all this stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see here. Let's turn off the contracts. Let's clear out our windows. <laughs> Okay, we have an engine failure. That happens. That happens with Kerbalism. Okay, not a problem. This thing actually does have a, an abort system built into it. I'll show it to you in just a little bit, but I guess you're going to see the vessel a little bit early. So let's deploy the fairings. There we go. And there is our vessel. Let's rotate this. I'm going to turn on SAS. And in fact, what I think I might just do... No, that doesn't make any sense. I was about to turn around and blow in the other way, but that doesn't work. And you can see the wings here. They do work. Okay, we'll put on the lights. Now, what you want to do is you want to lock those... Uh, I, I have it on an action group, too, to lock these hinges. They are a kind of flimsy. So they are in the locked position now. They can't be moved around anymore. Okay, let's uh, disengage... <laughs> That is disappointing. Uh, decouple this node. We're not even going suborbital, folks. I am very, very sorry. We can turn on some engines here. What is this? Oh, that we can. Let's take the staging off of that. I could have just staged. Let's disable that. And let's fire up these puff engines. Whoa, we are in thrust mode. And uh, these guys are monoprop engines. Um, that's the whole way this thing was going to go, and, well, you can sort of see what it is. It's a little space plane. So the idea for it to go up there, dock with the station on this docking port, um, and then come back down, and I guess we're going to be finding out how well this thing can land. We're going to aim for ditching it in the water. It's locked onto prograde here. Jebediah, you can do this. Oh, that is disappointing. Okay. Okay. The engines are not very good outside of a vacuum, so we will not have... Oh, here we go. We will not have um, a lot of ability to f actually fly with the engine. We're going to have to glide down, but let's bleed off some of this speed first. Oh, we are so disappointed with this high altitude abort, but hopefully we'll get everybody down safely. Oh, yes, the abort system. I talked about the abort system. Look at these groovy little engines. These are the 64-85 Chickadee landing engines, and I have them set up as, um, as uh, part of the abort system. So they fire off. They, they use... Here we go. We're doing very well here. Um... They have a large amount of thrust, but they just, they would burn through the monopropellant that's aboard this thing in just uh, a few seconds. So they burn through the monopropellant very quickly, but as an abort system, they're just great. They're not very heavy. In fact, they're lighter than the um, abort escape tower that comes with stock. So they work really well. And what I really like about them, I don't know if you can, if I can adjust these here, like I'm on the wrong thing. Let's pin this up here. Uh, what I really, really like about him is this here. You can make the throttle independent of the throttle control, and I just have the throttle set to 100%. So if I stage these, they're right here, these guys just come on at 100% without whatever the throttle happens to be on, on the rest of this, and that makes them perfect for um, an abort system. I think, I think that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, and what I can do right now is I can turn this down to 0% so I don't have to worry about turning them on accidentally uh, in the future. But anyway, we are on our way down. Let's uh, put this on. We're going to aim for ditching into the water. Now these wings can be these hinges. They can only take so much force. These are the stock hinges uh, before they kind of just buckle. So you got to be a little careful. You can't be too <laughs> aggressive with this. I did test this coming down from orbital velocities once, and it came down just fine. So this should go okay. Emphasis on the word should. I'm a little disappointed, but I do have more of these coming up because we have more tourists to bring up. But uh, So we'll, we'll try this again in just a little bit. 
I also tested the abort system from the launch pad, did a pad abort. And it was one of the sweetest little aborts I've ever had to do. Certainly better than some that I've done with the stock abort escape system. As long as nothing else goes wrong, we should be able to get these everybody back home safely. And that's what's important. So not an auspicious debut of this little guy, but it, it is showing that it is hopefully a safe means for uh, us to get Kerbals up into low Kerbin orbit. Okay, we are coming in now. Let's slow down. No problem. Ditching in the water. Ah, a little bit disappointing, but uh, oh well. What 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 you gonna do? All right. How long till we can launch another one? Oh, one's already ready to go. I can roll one out right now. The launch pad is being reconditioned, but I got another launch pad, so we can roll out another Puff Mark One. In fact, uh, while I'm thinking about this, let's get into plans and push in another <laughs> Puff Mark 1. Um, in fact, I'm going to put it up a little higher here. We, can, we got one ready right away! Already sitting on, not quite on the launch pad, but we'll roll it out to our second launch pad. We don't even have to wait the four hours for the launch pad to be reconditioned. Excellent! Okay, let's launch. Again, let's clear everybody out. So in the cockpit, I'm going to go with the same setup. Oh, wait, I can't. Ah, poop. I have to get different people now. Okay, Valentina. Unfortunately, they get their, their time off, don't they? Okay. Who can be our engineer now? Oh, nuts. It has to be Kerberi. Okay, we'll figure that out later. Crap. Okay. And uh, on the scientist front... Oh, it's got to be Bob. I'm sorry, Bob. You're the only one available after that mishap. That's the crew R&R &R mod who is forcing... You can't just push them right back out again. I think they get a week off. All right. Uh, I guess this is now round two. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not my first choice for who these people are going to be, especially Kerberi, who is required for a... Uh, one of these Kerbal Academy contracts I kind of need. Actually, I think she needs to go to the moon, so maybe we can make this work. Got the same tourists this time. They're not all grayed out, so maybe that's a, a good sign for things to come. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But oh my gosh! What happened there? Okay, we got it. We got oh my gosh! So let's get a little bit of altitude. We lost a booster. Oh, what is going on with these things? They're like jinxed. Okay, um, I'm going to actually abort, abort. Right now it's going up. There's no... I'm going to get some altitude first. But one of the boosters exploded on the launch pad. I don't know why. But uh, right now I just want to get some altitude. The higher the altitude, the... Wow, you're going to get a demonstration now of the uh, abort system. I'm a little surprised that the script didn't trigger an abort with that. It, if it, but it seems to have some... I don't know, this is shot. Maybe I'm gonna let it go. There's no way this thing's gonna make orbit. No way this thing is gonna make orbit. Not with minus a booster. I am amazed that this thing can hold altitude with the asymmetrical thrust that's. or hold its attitude with asymmetrical thrust right now. We're gonna lose. And again, oh, maybe this. I wonder what happened with the smart part there. I don't know. I had to stage that. Um, smart part failure. It's entirely possible the smart part was on the booster that blew up. <laughs> wow. Wow. This thing is just... We are not... This... this. We don't want to get to space, do we? Oh, we're going to keep... We're going to keep going with this. Uh, it's, it's under control. I am impressed that it was able to hold on to all that. I was very... my my hands were... Okay, there we go. Next stage is working. Good, good, good. My hands were just hovering over the abort key on my keyboard. 
But then I said, oh, well, it seems to be holding on to this, but we lost a lot. I mean, it, it came up on five-sixths of the boosters that it's supposed to come up on, so I would think there's a very, very good chance this thing's not going to make orbit, but we'll see how it goes. There goes the fairings. I love that. That looks really nice. Why that booster exploded, though? I don't know. Well, I think this thing might actually make orbit. I think it's going to. Thank goodness for overbuilt boosters. <laughs> I'm just looking at the velocity we have, and we still have like over 700 meters per second on this booster. There we go. Nice. Now it's getting ready for its circularization burn. It's still a couple of minutes away, so it's time warp to that. Alright, so it's 149 meter per second burn with 302 meters per second still left in this this booster. Looking pretty good. For an orbital insertion, as long as this stupid thing fires. I'm a little gun shy now. Is it going to go? Are you going to fire for me or are you going to fail for me? Three, two, one, and... Hurrah! There we go. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, program is ended. We are in an orbit. Let's lose our booster. There we go. Signal lost with the Mark 1 Pro. Oh, it just didn't like that. Okay, whatever. And, uh... It really didn't separate too cleanly. Do I need to give a couple of... A couple of puffs? Oh, no, there it goes. We're good. All right, let's get ourselves to the station. Puff engines using just monopropellant. Okay, 340 meter closest approach, that should be good. Again, just put it onto the normal vector just for the solar panels. That should do her. All right, uh, let's get out there. Start thinking about where we're gonna park this guy. Okay, so we are going to be switching to control to this docking port, which of course is gonna reverse everything. Oh yeah, I need to keep you on retro prograde now. <laughs> And we're going to shut down these engines. We're going to do the rest of this on monopropellant. Well, it was already monopropellant. I keep saying that. I did put on some nice docking lights down here. That should help to light up the station, though I don't think the station has too much trouble lighting up. Okay, let's uh, aim over to here. Where are we going to, where are we going to dock? Uh, that guy looks awful tempting, doesn't it? Okay, so let's set that as a target and reset you. Okay. Uh, let's see, how are we doing on our target? Not bad. It's just, oh, oh, let's take you off of that. There we go. Trying to create just a line here with this. Okay, let's put ourselves orient this way. And... We'll actually line ourselves. Oh, I'll look good like that. Do have to slow down here. We're coming kind of quick. Oh, not yet. Yeah, I'm very much in the habit of turning off RCS when I do attitude adjustments, but I finally use my head to disable yaw pitch and roll. <laughs> On these RCS thrusters so I don't have to do that okay let's slow down but if you see me toggling on and off the RCS that's the reason why nice approach all right so we got it up there it was a little bit of an adventure <laughs> but it got there Really nice little thruster blocks too. I'm sorry you can't really see them. They're just these nice little tiny ones. 
go in all different directions. The RC-15 RCS thruster block. Uh, I'm again, I, I'm, I'm attributing everything to restock, which might not be fair, but <laughs> we'll go with that. Okay, how far away? We? We're just 39 meters away here. Easy peasy. I like the thrust of power that's on these little, they're very, they're not very powerful, the thruster blocks, which I really like because I find the stock ones are a little bit too much all the time. I find myself always turning them down. But look at that. Look at that. Oh, gee, just just kissing it. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, and now it's time to get the current residence, the old residence of Kerbin Station. That would be Colonel Valley and Bill and Hades. And honestly, I've lost track of how long they've been up here. I think it's been a long time. So we'll get them into the Palm 1B. Okay, let's say goodbye to the station folks. And this is probably retiring the Palm 1B. It has been superseded by the Puff Mark 1. New technology, but the Palm 1B has served us well. But not all my old vessels are being retired just yet. So we're here with the Panther Mark 1. Um, and this is primarily a science. This is uh, from a, a, an exploration meant to be sciencey, a new contract pack. And you're supposed to go to a different group of biomes. And there is this climate study one, which is about s collecting surface samples, including the shores. So right now, we got Verbri here running this. It's going to take her another 15 seconds. And hopefully that should go green. Three, two, one. I guess we, oh, and it says we got to recover it. So maybe that's part of the plan as well. And there's also a geological study of Kerbin, which looks like you're doing the same thing, including going to, is, is the shores on the list? No, it's different biomes, it looks like ice caps or we're not going to go to all of these on this mission but it gives me a good excuse to go to different places but I also have uh, the wing experiment associated with this guy and for some reason according to this I've collected none of that I could have sworn I've collected at least some of that so let's go out and fly around and see how that performs and see if we can start collecting us some science that way we are starting to collect so we've got to stay above the shores here. we just got to stay below an altitude, I think, of six kilometers. And you might be wondering as well, why just Verbri, who is a pilot, not a scientist? Uh, this thing can't does have two seats. Why well, don't I have a scientist with her? Uh, because, well, I don't have any scientists available. <laughs> that uh, mishap with the, uh, you know, the one scientist came down. Uh, who was that? Hate us that came down uh, just recently. Uh, we had that mishap with the uh, first launch of the Puff Mark One, and uh, so that scientist is on a six-day respite, and uh, we got another scientist up at Kerbin Station, and that is all of my scientists. And we open up Kerbal Alarm Clock here. I put in the wait times. We've got to wait a while here. So for Jeb Orland and Madby, who were involved in that abort. Um, they got still six and a half days. Bill and Haydus has got 16 days, and then Colonel Valley 19 and a half days before they're back in service because these three were in space for a long, long time. So I might be a little short for crew for a little bit, and I'm going to need pilots to get all those tourists up to Kerbin Station. Oh, a crew report. See, I think I think uh, with my upgrade, I just did a crew report. I didn't even notice that. Oh my god, we're doing atmosphere. Oh, I think Kerbalism's confused. There's all kinds of science here that we have definitely collected before. <laughs> uh, I feel so bad, but I'm going to take it. <laughs> so yeah, obviously with all the upgrades, Kerbalism um, lost track of what science I have collected and what science I have not collected. And, uh, oh, I don't know. Like, uh I don't want to feel like I'm cheating, but at the same time, the way Kerbalism collects this stuff in the background 
it's going to be hard to control. It's going to happen whether I try to control it or not. Oh, maybe I need to. Yeah, I'm going to have to think about this. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll we'll put ourselves down in the grasslands. We'll collect a surface sample in the grasslands just for the contracts. And then we'll just get ourselves back. It's not like this thing's going to fly again soon anyway. Not because it will take long to recover. It's going to take, I don't know, it just takes minutes to roll a plane around. But because I don't have any pilots to fly the plane. And that'll give me some time to think about what I'm going to be doing with it. Alright, so we got all oh, 37.4 sciences here. That was still left on the plane. It's not like it's a ton does make me wonder though how much of that science that I was collecting earlier wasn't from Eve after all. Not like I can do much about that now. Let's check in on Kerbin Stage. Remember it has that busted solar panel. Okay, electricity says perpetual, so that's good. Ooh, but water. It said 38 days for water. That used to say perpetual too. Yeah. I think the extra kerbals, I can't keep up with the, the water reclaimers, can't keep up with the water consumption. I have a docking hub being built that has storage for more food and more oxygen, but not more water. Oh, I think I need to take a closer look at my station. So this is my Kerbin station with the docking hub. So this is the docking hub I have planned to install into it. Don't think it's going to be this episode. It's using a lot of new parts. These are from a mod, um, installed it on a whim. It's got a ton of parts, which I'm actually trying to avoid huge parts, uh, addition mods, but I'm not doing a very good job with it. This is the stock alike station redux deluxe or something like that. The the actual mod is in the description. Um, so these are like, uh, there's no, Kerbals can't live in here, but these are like transfer tubes, right? I like the windows that are on them. Uh, and then we have these, these are hatches that you can attach on. And on the end of those, I put docking ports. Actually, they're not hatches, they're, I think, no, I don't think they are hatches. Um, but again, Kerbals don't live in them, but they give you these nice radial attachment points and they look so good. And it, you know, this part of the station is mostly stock except for the universal storage bits that are in here. Um, but uh, it seems to fit in there really well. But anyway, um, what I need to do <laughs> is populate this station with a ton of kerbals and like in the end they'll probably be well there has to be 16 plus three trainers so there's gonna have to be 19 kerbals in there so i'm just let's now what do we got here that's that's 16. i got the room to do it uh three more one two three 19. so there's the 19 kerbals and then what i can do is look down here uh, they currently have 92 days of food. That's okay. The training session lasts 40 days, and I don't want to have so much food that when I start bringing these people back, that you know, it'll bounce back up again. Uh, they have 241 days of water according to this, but I think I need to stock the water up. I think that's the issue. So I don't need to put in more water containers according to this. There should be enough if I simply take the ones they have and fill them up so maybe the thing to do is to send up a water barge one cool thing I gotta show you again this is gonna be next episode installing this thing but I, I just gotta show it to you because I think it's this 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 had me falling in love with the mod right away these docking ports they extend look at that and the extension goes really nice and slowly the animation is really cool and that's all five of these docking ports all have these extensions on them which is absolutely awesome uh, eventually I'll probably get into space planes and space planes often need to have that extra space around them in order to dock them yeah I honestly I'm in love so what we're gonna do what we're gonna do is we're going back to Kerbin Station and we're going to take a look at restocking their supplies. So this is this thing does have water reclamation aboard, but once you get up that many kerbals, um, it simply isn't going to be able to to keep up with that. So 
what I need to do here is just take a look at the resources and we might as well stock up in fact we probably should stock up the food and the oxygen while we're at it so we're just gonna take a look at how much does it need how many units of food water and oxygen do we need to top up the tanks and then we'll just get back to the VAB where I have my old supply barge and uh, yeah all we got to do here is just tweak the payload a bit to make sure it carries what these folks need and we do want to make sure to test it and we'll just make sure that this performs well I always even though this I you know all we did was change really what this thing was carrying change very little as far as the rocket goes I always want to test these things you never know what kind of stupidity I might have introduced and for the cost of one of these simulations, um, this is well worth it. I do like this simulator program. It's the Crash Simulator. That's with a K, of course. And uh, it's pretty much necessary with Kerbal Construction Time because you can't... It's the only way you have of testing your rockets. Because if you press the launch button, all it does is build it. So unless you want to wait for it to be built and then test it, only to find out you, you overlook something silly, you want to have something like this simulator on it. But you know, even with out Kerbal construction time, I think this simulator is a pretty neat little mod because it neatly separates your testing phase from your actual mission phase. So if something goes wrong in your mission, you can live with it, but you, got, you have this opportunity to test, and testing's not for free. It's not a lot of money, but it's a little bit of money, and so it, it forces you to sort of make some sort of decisions. How much testing can I do? And you can, by the way, test it around parent bodies that you have previously visited. I like that stipulation as well. So if you want to test, you know, you got some sort of Duna lander and you need to test it, you can put it in orbit around Duna, provided you have entered in Duna's sphere of influence at least once before. Could be just a flyby, but that's what you need to do in order to unlock that ability within the simulator. Pretty cool. Certainly looks like this thing is performing fine. Uh, we got, we're up to an orbital velocity of just over 19,000 meters per second. And we still have 676 meters per second in the booster, so clearly circularization isn't going to be an issue. So we're going to terminate this simulation. So we're going to save this. And we're going to hit build or launch, but what that does is actually just adds it to the VAB build list. And by the way, if we take a look at our build list, it's getting pretty, pretty, pretty long. <laughs> I've, been, I've been busy building stuff. Uh, I want to really start pushing rockets out. So we're going to move this right up to the top of the priority because it really... Getting them food and water and oxygen probably is a high priority thing. It's only going to take about three days to build. But that's going to have to be for the next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you then.